Well, hey, what is up, YouTube? Victor, the rookie card specialist here on YouTube, and welcome. Hey, today I'm just coming at you chill mode. I'm just sitting here trying out this whole new StreamYard thing, and here's the thing. I'm trying to really learn this platform. It's a platform that I don't utilize very often. It's a platform that I have. I, I see the, the capabilities and the power that it has. And I really need to get acclimated with using it. I, I I know how to use it, but I'm not comfortable using it. I don't know if that makes any sense. But that is the reason why I'm coming at you in this type of format on StreamYard. I don't even pay for StreamYard. This is just a free version for now. But it's one of these episodes that I like to do every so often to break up the monotony of, of the rookie card. Because the rookie card you know, uh, uh, can be polarizing at times. And I like to come in and just do uh, uh, a kind of a chill video. I like to show you pickups. To be honest with you, I have not picked up anything. I have been off of work for the last nine weeks. And uh, I go back to work next week, thank goodness. But, um, you know, this is something that the wife and I, we had we kind of had to plan for this and and get our emergency fund type of thing ready for me missing, you know, two or three months of work. And so because, because of the, you know, sometimes you got to tighten the belt financially. And, and so in the last, uh, I would say three or four weeks, no, probably longer than that, probably more like six weeks, I haven't picked up nothing. And so with that said, uh, I'm going to glance this way. I got my, my notes just real quick six things that I want to bring up to you guys and just kind of let you guys know what I'm up to. Uh, but really guys, uh, I don't know if I'll even keep this video up. I'll probably keep it up for like a month or two and then I'll take it back down. The reason why is because I like to create content, ev what is called evergreen content. And that's, that's content that's going to be, you know, high in quality. And, and I do that for a couple of reasons. And that is, um, I want my videos to stand like the test of time and, 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 and those why that's how come I don't do a lot of like video response videos. I have done them in the past. Don't get me wrong, but it's just something I don't do uh, only because I, I want my, my, my channel to be evergreen content. And I also, you know, I don't do like news of the day, that type of thing. Uh, I just, there's plenty of people out there that do it and they do it a lot better than I would. And it's just really something, uh, you know, because I'm Carlos is perhaps my favorite one. I have just a couple of guys that I watch, but uh, Carlos is one of them. And I just, um, you, you know, I don't, I don't want to regurgitate uh, news when there's other people that are doing a lot better job at it than I would. So, uh, and, and that, those are the reasons why, uh, you know, I, I, I like to do what I'm doing. And uh, I just want my library to be, a, a source of like information. So like if, if you're, you'll even notice in my titles, my titles are very SEO friendly, meaning if you go on Google and you, and you type up a specific question about a rookie card, I want the algorithm, the SEO uh, search engine optimization. I want it to trigger my video or my article on my website and, and that kind of thing. And that's where, and I think a lot of that is I'm so conditioned to be uh, Google mindful on algorithms and that sort of thing through my website that it kind of just carried over into my YouTube channel. And, uh, and, and so those are the reasons why I like to create evergreen content. Uh, I wanted to let you guys know on a recent appearance that I had on uh, JT triple con 24's channel. Um, we did an, a, a, a video talking about the major league baseball MLB rookie card logo and, and the um, uh, JT's JT's podcast deals with uh, like sports card psychology. And, and so we were talking about the, the effects that that logo has on collectors and, and, and our psyche and the importance of it all. And we got into the ins and outs of that had a lot of fun. Uh, JT man just asked some great questions. I was very impressed with the level of questions that were asked and I'll leave a link to it in the description down below. If you want to check it out, you can. Um, what else? A couple of things that I wanted to talk about that, 
that are concerning to me. And the first one is on my last video, I, I made mention of why I think my website is different from other ones. And, and I spoke about certain websites always giving you the top 10 list or the five most expensive rookie cards of, you know, so-and-so. And I kind of did my little spiel on that. And, you know, I, I had somebody reach out and, and kind of, you know, asked or, or made a statement that he thought that those types of lists that, a, that a rookie card should be determined by how valuable a, a rookie card is. And, and I was like, mm, I don't know. That just didn't, and that's not the first time I've heard that. I've heard that elsewhere. And, and I was just like, mm, I don't know about that. I don't know about that guy. That's, that's what they call hashtag debatable. Uh, but a true rookie card is not, you can't go by its value uh, because a couple of things, it might be, let's just take Wander Franco right now. You, you his, his tops rookie card. That's probably the most valuable one right now or maybe it's the 2021 Bowman's best, but three months from now, they're going to release a, a different product that is going to be more valuable than this one now in, in the secondary market. So now, so now what the true rookie card is bounces around depending on, on, on the sale of cards. That just, that doesn't make sense. Also, you can't, you can't trust it because, you know, unfortunately the hobby is not all, always honest sometimes there's a little bit of selfishness and immaturity or, or let's just be straight. Sometimes there's a little bit of greed that sneaks through. And what we have is rookie cards that are shill bid and, and, and prices can be manipulated. And that's how come we, we can't, we can't determine a true rookie card by the source of its uh, secondary value. That just, that just isn't, that doesn't, that's not right. When I speak of true rookie card, and, and I, this was more the question that the guy was asking me when I use the term true rookie card, I'm not talking about flagship. I'm not talking about the most valuable card. When I say true, I am, I am talking about uh, the, the cards that fall in compliance with the players associations and the hobbies guidelines. That's how I pluck out and determine true. And that's my definition of it. So with that said, um, I just wanted to bring clarification on, on that aspect of it. The second thing was citing sources. And I had a couple of things happen in the last week or two that I want to bring to your attention. But I ended up watching a video with Sports Card Investor. And uh, he, he created a video on Wander Franco's 2022 Tops Rookie Card. And they were talking about production runs. Well, in that video, he, he ran some numbers and, and somebody made a comment in the comment section that he stole those, that information from Scotty B cards and Scotty's got a great channel. It's something that he typically does. He, he likes to run those. He has like a mathematical equation where he likes to try to figure out production runs and, and that sort of thing. And he's been known for doing that for quite some time. And, and so now um, sports card investor comes up and uses those numbers. And it seems like somebody took exception to that in the comments and they made quite, and they made a comment about it. And, and that, that's not the big part about it. The big part is the amount of people that hit the thumbs up button on his comment. And then there was comments on that comment and they were saying, yes, that is indeed uh, Scotty B's information. Why didn't you cite your source? Why didn't you give Scotty credit for that? And I can totally, totally agree with this. It's just uh, something that that I've learned from the from the blogging side of things, where when you're on a, on, on a blogging website, you have to be very, very careful to cite sources. I mean, it's 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 the professional thing to do. It's the at at it could be a very legal issue when it comes to website articles. You got to be very, very careful what you write and, and you, you, you best uh, cite your sources uh, because people, there's a way of uh, finding out you can run uh, uh, certain chunks of paragraphs through this web searcher and it'll tell you 
where that inform if that information is original or if it was stolen from somewhere else. So it's a it's a big deal, I know for sure, in the blogging community. But overall, it's just a, it's just the professional thing to do is just to cite the source. And I know Sports Card Investor, a few days later, they went ahead and created another video. And that topic came up again about uh, Wander Franco's production numbers. And it was at that time then that uh, I believe it was Teapot who gave Scotty B a, a shout out and gave him credit for that uh, for that information that he that he put out. With that said, last week, I uh, was listening to um, a podcast, a podcast. I'm not subscribed to the podcast and, but it, the topic uh, was about rookie cards. And I don't know if it's an algorithm thing, everything, anything that's released about rookie cards. It seems like the algorithm just shows it to me, but it was a podcast actually based out of the Chicagoland region, right, right here. And they had one episode dealing about rookie cards i'm not going to mention names because that's not important and i'm, I'm not i don't want to bust nobody out or nothing like that that's not what this is about but anyways in that episode the co the host the host didn't know much about it but the co-host it, it kind of sounded like he knew something about it but as i was listening to the episode there was a chunk of it that i, I tell you guys literally it was word for word what I say and preach here on, on my YouTube channel. And it's like he had taken a, 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 a portion of it and made it him, his, uh, made it his own uh, with no citing of source and with no shout out, with no nothing, just, just took it. And um, I, I, I couldn't believe it. I just could not believe it. Obviously, you know, I'm going to reach out and uh, I didn't, I didn't get, belligerent about it I, I was professional but i kind of just gave him a little tap on the shoulder and just waved high and um you know i don't know it, it's just uh some professional that's all i gotta say about it <laughs> cite your sources man it's the right thing to do period um what else did i want to talk to you guys about my podcast yes uh, my podcast, I've been working diligently on my podcast the last couple of weeks, uh, as I'm getting down to the nuts and bolts of it all and, and, and getting this thing up and going. And I think that's going to be the hardest part, just getting it up and going, but I, I got two episodes ready to go. I want to get one more, uh, recorded and then one, I'm going to upload three episodes at the same time. And, and hopefully that'll get the ball rolling. And, um, I did stop and re rethunk this thing. Is that a word? Rethunk it. I thought about it again. <laughs> um, but I, I, I said, man, you know, with the with the manage a website management that I'm I'm doing with my website, I and 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 the the quality of my YouTube videos that I want to constantly put out. Do I have time for this? Is this the right thing for me to do? Is it worth it? And so I, oh, I came this close to just putting a kibosh on the whole podcast thing. And I was going to let everybody know, but I went ahead and said, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to keep it. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to proceed with the podcast. So stay tuned for that. I would say by end of March or mid April, we're going to have everything going on that. Uh, lastly, I wanted to talk to you guys about was just viewer, viewer questions. Now there's something that I love to do more than anything else. And that is uh, take your request. And, and when somebody gives me an idea, I know I, I created a Bryce Harper rookie card video a couple of months ago. And since that video, I had like four different people reach out and, and contact me about making one for Shohei Otani. And, and when I have that much generated interest on a certain topic, I'm going to go ahead and, and put the work in and the research to, to present that video. And I had a lot of fun putting that video together. And I just wanted to let everybody know and encourage you that it is okay to contact me. I am an open book. I am transparent. If you have any questions or concerns or ideas, video ideas, uh, contact me. Let me know. Give me your thoughts and questions or ideas. And I would love to... Uh, to 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 put the work in on that you can contact me either through twitter or instagram my handles are tr true underscore rcs at twitter or instagram also you can contact me through my youtube channel 
or you can contact me through my website. I have a contact page there or my email, victor at truerookiecards.com. Uh, multiple ways to get a hold of me. There's no way you can't get a hold of me, but uh, highly encourage if that's something you want or need. I am here uh, for you. With that said, I wanted to keep this video like under eight minutes. And as you can see, <laughs> <laughs> that didn't happen. But with that said, guys, listen, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate you very much. And I'm going to catch you on the next one.